Hello everyone. Hope you're doing well. And as always, if you are new to my channel, I would humbly request you to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so that you shall be able to see all my latest engineering videos. Okay, today's, ta today's task at hand is basically we want to study the connection between statics, dynamics and solid mechanics. Okay, so what is the main connection between these three branches and these are the three branches of engineering mechanics okay as you know engineering mechanics is basically a main branch of applied sciences that is concerned with the state of rest or of motion of bodies which are being subjected to action of forces okay in this picture you can see various types of structures are being there like a pulley a chain and pulley system is there then there is going to be a motion in it then there is a the force being applied on a cantilever bridge and as a result of this this uh, cantilever bridge will deform there is a truss structure over here in which a load is being applied and as a result of which uh, there are, will be various forces generated in this uh, diagonal and linear truss structures uh, there is a frame shown over here okay then there is again a beam is being applied with pin and truss uh, pin and uh, uh, roller structures uh, were there uh, then you can see there is a friction being created as a result man pulling uh, this structure over here so in all these things uh, you can see various types of principles of statics and dynamics and solid mechanics will be applied in order to study this statics and dynamics it is very important to study newton's first law and newton's second law if you come here and basically you study newton's first law we know that newton's first law deals with uh, bodies which are at rest or they are moving with constant velocity that is the main uh, definition of newton's first law and if we further want to understand what we mean by uh, equilibrium of a body it means that all the forces which are acting on a body they must be equal to zero it means whether over here you can see a coplanar force system being shown or a three dimensional non coplanar force system there it means that uh, is being shown to you it will be uh, that this condition will always hold that the summation of all the resultant forces acting on a body must be equal to zero if you want to study newton's first law for statics it is very uh, easy to understand that as we know newton's second law is always equals to f equals to ma and we can write acceleration is equals to fr upon m where fr is the resultant force but in newton's first law we know that the resultant forces acting on a body whether it is a coplanar force system or a non coplanar force system it will always be equal to zero so it means that if fr equal to zero it means that acceleration generated will always be equal to zero in such kind of a system in which all the resultant forces are acting Zero. So this is one of the best ways to understand what is statics. Okay. So as we already know, the statics also deals with uh, forces that acts on a body which are at rest under equilibrium or moving at constant velocity, a straight line. Now we can go to Newton's second law. Okay. Newton's second law basically deals with the accelerated motion of the body. It means over here that we know whenever there is acceleration of any body it will always follow the rule f is equals to ma so acceleration will be equals to f upon m okay so again the acceleration of the movement of an object is proportional to the resultant force okay. so you can see acceleration of a body is always will be proportional to this resultant force and it will also be in the same direction of the resultant force as you can see over here okay again if we want to go we can also see very important further newton's third law okay newton's third law explains us it's an action and reaction law okay so the forces of action and reaction between the two objects are equal collinear and opposite okay so if you can see over here we have force a which is acting on body b okay and we here it's a force b which is acting on a okay so force a is applying an action on b and the reaction will be given by force b the most important thing over here is that these two forces 
are equal and you can say they are collinear which are acting on the same line and you can see the senses of these two forces which is opposite to each other okay so now we, can, we, we it is very important to understand this organ organogram for engineering mechanics okay so here they have given you this organogram in which engineering mechanics can be subdivided into two domains the classical mechanics and the quantum mechanics okay uh, the quantum mechanics deals with the atomic and subatomic systems in which we are dealing with uh, composites and nanocomposites of a system in which we are dealing with actually microsystems and uh, length based and also nano based systems which is like in ten, uh, systems based on 10 to the minus 9 meter of length okay and macroscopic systems are basically the real world systems which could be easily be visible to the human eye okay so they are called as macroscopic which are basically systems in which uh, which are based on uh, millimeters domain or length domains or meters domains so they are very large real world systems quantum mechanics always deals with atomic based systems okay whereas classical mechanics deals with the real based systems which are visible to the human eye these quantum based mechanics systems are not visible to the human eye okay so classical mechanics are further divided into these domains of uh, rigid body deformable solids and the fluid mechanics okay. fluid mechanics is basically deals with incompressible and compressible solids where, which is certainly not the domain of our this video we are making we are mainly concerned with the rigid body and deformable solid bodies okay so rigid bodies are further being subdivided into statics and dynamics okay when we say statics and dynamics are studied as a whole, it comes under the domain of Newtonian mechanics. Okay, so it is very easy to understand. Whereas uh, when we study dynamics, remember, it will always have uh, two branches, kinetics and uh, the kinematics. Okay, so, uh, and again, we know that uh, whenever we basically been dealing with uh, uh, the position, the velocity, the acceleration and the geometrical aspects of the body we always study under domain of kinematics and whenever we're dealing with the the force aspects of the body we're dealing with the uh, uh, kinetics okay for example the effect of the wind and effect of the gravity okay so this is studied under domain of dynamics and we're dealing with accelerated motion of the body deal and the newton second law holds which we have just defined f equals to ma but when we are dealing with statics, we will always be considering the Newton's first law, as we have just explained it. Okay. So we go to here. We have another thing in this uh, uh, slide. We can see that we will study the three domains of engineering mechanics. Okay. The first domain, if you look at it, is basically the types of system that we will be considering. Okay. It is the solid system in which we have a rigid body and a particle is being further subdivided into it and we have a deformable solid. Okay. And again, we are, we, here we have two types of status of motions being defined. Uh, the first type deals with the Newton's first law, which is the equilibrium, fr equals to zero. And the second uh, domain of motion is deals with the accelerated motion of body, which is fr is equals to mg. Then it is very important to understand over here is what is rigid versus deformable. Okay, here it is they have written as rigid body systems and deformable body systems. Okay, so you must know that rigid body systems are those systems like this hammer. If you look at it, it is a rigid body system. It means that uh, this bridge is considered to be basically a rigid body system. It means that whenever forces are being applied on these systems there will be no deformations generated in the body for example if you look at it this rigid body system is being shown over here these two masses are being hanged but you can see there is no bending effect generated because of the rigid body you know it will not bend or deform well we have a deformable body okay for example this car is considered as a deformed body this spring when load is being applied undergoes compression and it gets deflected okay this scissor is again if you look at it is a rigid body so when a deformable body comes up over here in front of you whatever the load is being applied it will get deformed okay 
you look at this car crashing into a rigid body and you can see that this car is since it's been deformed it has undergone a state of crash worthiness and the front bonnet is being compressed so this is uh, what is called as a deformable body the car is basically being acting as a deformable body so this is the difference between rigid body and deformable body a rigid body is a body that will never deform and a deformable body is a body on which whenever a load or a loading is being applied it will undergo deformation so now as the concept of rigid and deformable body is understood now we can basically undergo to the next slide and here you can see as they have given you the first uh, domain of system over here in which you can see this is our rigid body and this is basically our equilibrium of forces in which the force equilibrium is considered zero whenever this scenario arises we will always be studying statics okay so statics simply is dealing with structures okay and in which we assume that those structures do not deform on the application of the load so the body is basically being considered rigid this is a very important concept of statics okay and, and again very important thing that in engineering all those engineers who study different domains they have to study statics and they have to apply that concept of statics in the future uh, career and their future jobs okay so so again in statics as structures will be involved structures to understand what are structures structures could be anything it could be a building it could be a car it could be a plane it could be cranes so the structures will always be involved in statics uh, whenever you're dealing with any static structures okay so this is very uh, very important concept for statics then we basically go to the other domain in which we basically stand uh, here you can see this is your system a rigid body system is en uh, engaged over here with an accelerated motion of system Okay. so whenever a rigid body is being involved with an accelerated motion of system we will be studying dynamics okay so this is very important so the type of uh, motion that it will be generated as a result of that accelerated motion can have three forms it can be uh, a translation it can be a rotation or it can be a combination of translation and rotation which is called as the general plane motion of a system so this is whenever uh, this scenario arises we will always be studying dynamics again a rigid body is being involved and an accelerated motion of body and again which newton's law follows this system it is newton's second law okay so then we go to another system of engineering mechanics in which we have what is called as a deformable solid but we are dealing with equilibrium of force system Okay, we're dealing with the equilibrium of force system, which is basically the Newton's first law. Whenever this happens, we study it as mechanics of materials, or we study as solid mechanics. Okay, so this is very important. So, in mechanics of materials or solid mechanics, we are dealing with deformable bodies. But deformable bodies are in equilibrium, since Fr, the resultant forces acting on that body, is basically being in equilibrium. So, okay, so it deals. Uh, this type of system of mechanics of materials behaves uh, when different types of loadings are being acted on a body. Okay, those loadings can be tension, they can be compression, it can be bending, it can be torsion. And as a result, we see, we study that uh, forces will be involved. As a result of those forces, uh, we will see force acting or area will generate stresses. And as a result of those stresses, since those bodies are going to deform, we can say that deformation uh, will be generated in that body. And we can see that we can see further that whether those deformations generated on the body could also creates failures. So this is how we study mechanics of materials. Another very important application of mechanics of materials is that it is applied in every engineering field. Whether you study engineering mechanic, uh, mechanics, uh, mechanical engineering, whether you study civil engineering, whether you study manufacturing engineering, whether you study aerospace engineering, the application of mechanics of materials or solid mechanics is very vast. And you have to study this subject very, very uh, uh, 
clearly and very very consciously uh, understand the concepts of mechanics of materials okay so in order to understand further we can see here that uh, when these are the various buildings and in these buildings you can see these are various building structures okay so this whenever we studying the structures as rigid we will be applying the concepts of statics in these structures but whenever we study the structures as uh, the structures are uh, basically not rigid and deformable then we will be applying the concept of uh, solid mechanics and mechanics of materials okay so again if you can over here understand is that you have basically bridges are there whenever bridges are being involved these are all those structures uh, rockets are involved in these structure these are all structures and in in which uh, you have to study statics if you are considering those structures as rigid but if those same structures you are studying it mechanics of materials you will have to consider all these structures as a uh, non rigid and deformable okay so this is basically the concept of uh, uh, mechanics of materials solid mechanics and dynamics and statics i hope uh, you would have understand the basic statics dynamics and solid mechanics connection and uh, i thank you very much for seeing this video of mine and in the end i would uh, be thankful to you and i would request you to be always be generous and gracious to everyone uh, thank you very much